So the 60th anniversary specials of Doctor Who have now concluded, and it seems that in each episode there was some attempt to push another aspect of the message, as we've discussed before. The third and final episode saw this really strange ending where the 14th Doctor, played by David Tennant, began to regenerate, only to be sort of duplicated, but kind of split in two. He bi-generated, almost like he gave birth to the 15th Doctor, played by Shuti Gatwa. The imagery here is quite odd, to say the least, and the David Tennant version of the Doctor was allowed to basically retire and live a normal life on Earth, while this new Doctor goes off for new adventures. To me, it felt like the legacy of the David Tennant Doctor was somewhat sullied by the infusion of woke in these past three specials, but the same could be said for the entire in-universe history of the character of Doctor Who at this point. Throughout the Peter Capaldi era, the Doctor was increasingly being shown up and put in his place by his then-companion Clara Oswald, and the Jodie Whittaker, Chris Chibnall era took the identity politics stuff to new levels of stunning and brave, which I've talked about before as well. Now, of all the big franchises to go stunning and brave, Star Trek, Doctor Who, Indiana Jones, the MCU, Star Wars, all of them, I think Star Trek has probably fared the best, actually, in that it is possibly the one that can be fixed the easiest when compared to the others. If anyone was ever in a position to, and if the cultural and political zeitgeist was to change in the future, but Star Wars seems to be unable to innovate beyond the original trilogy. Star Trek changed a great deal over the decades and reinvented itself. It's only since 2001, when Enterprise came along, that it started to look back too much and kind of navel-gaze with prequels. Mind you, Enterprise ended up being a decent show by the end, but when a franchise starts resorting to prequels, you know that the people running the show are beginning to run out of ideas creatively. Uh, then we got the J.J. Abrams reboots, which no one wanted and most fans still don't want any more of. Then we got another prequel with Star Trek Discovery, full of antagonistic and unlikable characters and uh, an edgy dark tone that was so unfitting of Star Trek, which seems to have its own dedicated fan base. Then we got Star Trek Picard, same again, uh, only its final season was good, its first two seasons are horrific. And then we got Strange New Worlds, another prequel, uh, which is really also a reboot because it's visually, canonically, and tonally different to the original series. I'm not even bothering to comment on the animated shows of Lower Decks and Prodigy. But Star Trek, like I say, could be fixed in a way that Doctor Who just can't be. The era of the 13th Doctor was so bad and so destructive to the character, especially the Timeless Child episode, which made a, a major change and retcon to the character's backstory and, and uh, history that I don't think there's any recovering. And now it's pushing content and ideas that, in my opinion, are not suitable for children. Now, Star Wars, like I say, doesn't seem to be able to move past Han, Luke, Leia, Palpatine, and Darth Vader, right? The universe and stories, for the most part, seem to center around the events of the first three films, as seen in the various prequels, and even in the ultimate events of the sequel trilogy. Everything always kind of ties back to nostalgia for the original 70s and 80s trilogy. Yes, there's some stories that focus on, say, the Clone Wars, which is even further back again in the canonical timeline, but there's an emphasis on being unable to let go of the past and innovate and redesign the franchise, bringing Star Wars into a new paradigm. I think Star Wars could be fixed as well, uh, but its inability to move on from its past is really holding it back. So the recent productions have felt derivative to me. Even if the feminist Mary Sue, Ray type stuff was dropped, it needs a new vision. Maybe Star Wars just isn't suited to the kind of change and reinvention that Star Trek was capable of. It, 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 they are very different formats as well. They look outwardly similar, but Star Wars is more fantasy-based. Star Trek is more science on the science fiction scale, if you know what I mean. Um, and it changed a lot from the original series with The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. They all had their own unique voice and tone. I think the MCU is in a bigger hole, 
again, it's capable of producing its winning formula, as evidenced by the likes of the recent Spider-Man films, Far From Home and No Way Home. But it has, much like Doctor Who, doubled down on the identity politics stuff, and it shows no signs of changing despite major financial failures recently, uh, which are far worse uh, than any of the other franchises. The MCU is the biggest moneyed franchise of all of them. And so, so the box office failings are much more significant than, say, the declining TV ratings of something like Doctor Who. And to make matters worse, the MCU suffers from the issue that it has saturated the market with the superhero genre, which there's just too much of. There's too too many of these films and TV shows at the moment. So even if it's stopped with the wokery, could it return to its former glory? Probably not. I think that ship has sailed in that I think the golden age of superhero cinema from, you know, 2008 to 2019, and that that includes a, a lot of really good DC films in there as well, I think that was almost a Concord moment, that whole era. I think there will be great superhero films in the future, no doubt. But the days of the guaranteed billion-dollar blockbuster superhero movie, I think those are over for now. Superhero movies in the future uh, are not going to have these gargantuan budgets, I think. They're going to have to operate on smaller budgets in order to give them the best opportunity of breaking even. So... To me, this is the state of play, as I see it, for a lot of the big modern franchises. And it's the reason, again, why uh, if you want to see real innovation and creativity, you're going to have to look to independent filmmakers and writers in the future. Like I say, uh, a parallel creative society. So thanks very much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you'd like to support my work, please do so via the link below to my Subscribestar. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.